Det vi nu ska titta på är ett unikt reportage ifrån det största teamet i NASCAR Nextel Cup, nämligen Roush Racing. Roush Racing är det absolut största teamet i NASCAR Nextel Cup-serien. I de här byggnaderna bakom oss och runt omkring i det här fabulösa komplexområdet så har vi då hela teamet samlat. Ja, och det består ju av fem förare i NASCAR Nextel Cup-serien, bland annat 99 Carl Edwards. Och nummer 16 Greg Biffel. Nummer 97, Kurt Busch, 2004 års mästare. Och bil nummer 17, Matt Kenseth. Och sen den stora stjärnan åtminstone i år, nämligen Mark Martin som kör bil nummer 6 och han kommer lägga hjälmen på hyllan efter säsongen 2005. Vi ska gå in och titta lite grann och se vad de har att erbjuda här inne och jag tror nog att alla kommer ha stort nöje av det här. Vi står inte här och bladdrar mer utan vi går rakt in, eller hur? Jajamän. Well, you're here at the world headquarters of Roush Racing. We've uh, been in this building about a year, so all the corporate offices are here. Our lawyers and our marketing folks are here. The trackside souvenir sales where we sell the t-shirts and hats, all those managers are here, as well as the museum and the gift shop. And we have an 80-seat theater that shows the last 10 years of Roush Racing. Now, we have around 400 employees throughout the company. Uh, we started the company in 1988 with one team, and now we have 10 teams 10 NASCAR teams that we race. We're the largest motorsports team in the world. So uh, we like being here in the Concord area because it's close to the to the fans and the, the racetrack. And then uh, later on in the in the uh, tour, you'll be able to see the race shops where the race cars are built and uh, and maintained with all the sponsors and, uh, and the crew guys there at the shop. Where we are now is the chassis shop. Uh, one, the way this works here is a crew chief will uh, set with Dave Dunlap, which is a department manager, and they'll uh, write a work order, and it takes about 173 man hours to produce a chassis for the guys to put the body on it. Are they uh, specific for the driver? Well, different see, and... that crew chief is, is specific for that driver because of that team. So we'll build a car for that team, and, and we'll, we'll build it for a specific track, but not to say we couldn't take it to a different racetrack, but initially we'll build it for a track like there's four types of cars. You'll build super speedway cars that only can run at Daytona and Talladega, and then you'll build cars like at Lowe's Motor Speedway, Texas, Las Vegas, California, and that's the same type of car. Then we'll go along and build short track cars for places like Martinsville, Virginia, uh, 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 Richmond, Virginia, Bristol, Tennessee, and then we'll have to build ra road race cars because they turn left and right. So there's four distinct types of cars that we build. Notice the tubing on these race cars. Some of it is shiny, some of it is not. The reason the tubing shiny is you never get the right thickness from the, from the mill. NASCAR says mandates a certain thickness on the steel, so we take an extra dollar a foot and grind that tube down to make sure it's that tolerant thickness because it'll always be thicker than we want it to be and you and you still you've taken weight off the top of the car which which enhances the performance but it doesn't compromise the integrity of the chassis okay. and it's perfectly legal that's good as you see behind me this is where the bodies are put on of the 800 man hours i said earlier are, are the seven weeks three weeks are in here it takes two weeks to build the chassis through three weeks to put the body on. The reason it takes so long is we only use the hood, the roof, and the trunk lid from a stock 2005 Taurus. Everything else we make. So the fenders, the doors, and the quarter panels are made by hand in a roller. Take a flat piece of steel and roll that and fit it and roll it some more and fit it and fit it. And then we make sure the tippets fit the car. So after the car leaves here, it's in its fifth, it's ended his fifth week and then the final two weeks for painting and assembly. This car was wrecked Saturday night in the next Dell All-Star race. So when the team gets back, they'll unload the car out of the transporter. They'll take all, the engine out, and then they'll take the suspension components off of it, and it'll go into this room here to put it up on the fixture or the jig. And then they'll measure all the points from the way they built it to make sure something's not bent. Well, come to find out, this whole front frame section was bent, so it's just a lot easier and faster to cut away that section and replace it with a new one. The car, is, the, the car is built in three sections. We call the front snout, the center portion of the car, and the rear clip. So those sections can be replaced. We will not do anything if the center part is bent. We, we won't fix the car. We'll make a show car out of it or, or scrap it, but we won't let the drug go back in the car that the center part's bent. 
All the tractors here at Roush Racing are Volvo tractors. This is a 770, 780 series tractor uh, that we we uh, we get from Volvo. With 25 tractor trailers and 14 of them haul T-shirts. So the uh, the 11 uh, race car transporters are are also uh, are uh, uh, pulled by the Volvo tractor. How do you like the Volvo? Oh, I love them. There. Love them. Yeah. After the body gets put on the car, they come into the paint shop for uh, for the prep and the paint. It'll go to my right to get the body seams filled up, and that's called Bondo. Then go in the next booth and they'll put primer on it to have the, so the paint will stick. And then they'll go into one of these heated booths behind me and they'll spray their color on it, but the color's dull like my shirt. It has to be shiny. So we'll put two coats of polyurethane clear coat over the top of it to bring the luster out. Turn the burner on to 140 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. After one hour's up, let the, coo let the car cool off for 45 minutes and roll it out, and then you can put your decals on. We could paint 20 cars a day if we had to. After the car comes out of the paint shop, it comes into one of these rooms. It comes into one of these rooms for final assembly. The mechanics will take all the suspension, they'll put on it, put, it, put the suspension on it, put the engine in it, they'll push it outside, they'll start it, make sure everything's, all the fluid levels are right and everything, and then come to the setup plate, and either they'll put the decals on here, or, or wait till they get through with the setup plate and they'll put the decals on. And this is where they check the heights of the car, the NASCAR mandated heights, our heights that we built the chassis, the front end geometry, all those things are checked on this car. Do you actually test the car on, on another track before you go to the actual race track? We have, we can, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. We'll go to, uh, we'll go to uh, 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 Lowe's Motor Speedway, we'll go to, to, uh, to a road race test place, it, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. It just depends. We're limited in the number of tests we could go to, so we try to target the ones that we may be weak at, or we want to concentrate on getting better at that particular track, or they, they've changed the tire compound, we're not used to that tire, so we'll go there and make sure we're, we're on our game. But they change the compound quite, quite often. Doesn't they do every year, just about, yeah. Yeah. And this year they're very much softer. Than yeah, they're that. softer this year because of the smaller rear spoiler. Yeah. yeah. When you cut an inch off the rear spoiler, they wanted to make the tire softer to compensate for it, so the driver's not such a such a such a huge uh, change. So so that's how they do that. This is another area where we assemble and disassemble the race cars, either after an event or the event coming up. So you see different cars in here for different teams. Uh, we're right now in the six cars, about three weeks ahead of schedule in terms of having the cars ready. So the car that uh, to my left is the car for the world, for the Coca-Cola 600, and then the car directly in front of me is the next week's car, Dover, and to my right is the Pocono car, and the car that is gonna race the Coca-Cola 600 will go to Michigan if nothing happens. So they're right three weeks ahead right now in terms of having everything ready. A Little bit about the company. We started, to, as I said earlier, we started ra racing in 1988, and we've grown from, uh, uh, one team of 20 some odd people now to 400 people and 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 some of the things that we do we we this is a business we we run it just like a, a business we we all the employees are salaried uh, we have bonus programs that they participate and share in the prize money that the car wins uh, we we have the same insurance policies and everything that everyone else does uh, uh, then uh, some of the things of the logistics part of it is is trying to get all these people to and from the racetrack. So so we have two 727s that we fly the teams. The first airplane typically leaves around five o'clock on Thursday afternoon to take 88 people to the air to the uh, to the next event. So so the seats and things are configured a little bit different for for accommodation. Uh, we follow all the FAA guidelines. The pilots work for us. The flight attendants work for us. Uh, we, uh, we don't serve any alcohol on the airplane. We don't allow any smoking in any of the buildings on the airplane or any of the vehicles. So the first plane gets to the event and it stays. So the next wave would come on Sunday morning uh, as early as we need to be there. They'll bring 30, uh, 66 people on that airplane and for the people that only go on, uh, on Sunday. So after the event's over with, we'll take the first airplane of 88 seats and load that up as soon as the event's over, bring them home, and if anybody needs to stay for post-race inspection or anything else, then we'll load that second plane up and bring him home. Because it takes 20 people to pit the car on Sunday. 
even though you only see seven people go over the wall, it takes 20 in the model to do all the things it does that it needs to do to pit the car. Because you have spotters and scorers and, and people running and getting gasoline, people running and getting tires and, 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 and uh, gluing up the lug nuts for the next set of wheels and tires. All those things have to be done.